it would have been god about a year and a half ago now the first conversations of this actually started um i was just sitting on teams one day and i seen a message pop up from john palmer who ended up heading the project because he stuck with us the whole way uh, where he'd seen a proof of concept around using WhatsApp and just connecting that to some code, and he just wanted to do something with it. Um, really, the Grabot came around as a sort of a, um, a side of desk thing. Um, so it's not actually what myself or Kieran or you know Aidy and even Emma do day to day. It's really kind of a thing we do in a spare time. And then whenever we brought in Aidy and Neve, we specifically went looking for people with certain skills, and we found them very quickly, and they were very eager to get on board. Uh, Stephen and Kieran came on a call and just said they had this idea to create a, I suppose, a chatbot for new graduates where they could kind of pose questions. And they were saying that they just needed somebody with um, a little bit of coding experience, maybe Python, to give a hand or, you know, someone would be happy to help out with like documentation and things. So I think I remember that Stephen had talked about it was to do with the uh, UAT program and how they were receiving so many, such a large number of emails coming through to new grads that they were just looking for ways to offset uh, the number of emails coming into that uh, mailbox and the number of queries there. They actually approached our start group looking for people to put in answers to the questions. I think they were just looking for sort of what questions grads want answered when you're applying to jobs and we just joined. We set like a few different levels of goals. Initially we were like if we can just get information out there some way that would be good or the next one would be if it helped people navigate the website or something that would be good and then we kind of set like the gold standard one, the one that we really wanted was like just a full-on chatbot through WhatsApp for the graduates. They had the initial idea, they kind of saw this problem that needed to be solved and they had the idea and they kind of knew what they needed and this was what me and AD then provided was you know the I suppose the, the coding to solve the problem. And we very quickly realised from workshopping with the recruitment and the university teams that if we could bundle all this information together in a really easy to access way, uh, hence WhatsApp, because so many people use WhatsApp, it was the most popular uh, communications platform in the country. Um, it was just ideal for us to be able to do this and just take away that burden somewhat from the recruitment team, but also the students coming through that can just ask any questions they want. It's the easiest way to get the stuff that we know every grad is asking because we asked it. Well, I think of it as the questions that you don't really want to ask to a human. There are certain questions that you, if you're looking at a new job with a new perspective, you maybe don't want to ask an actual person who's working there because you might give off some kind of bad impression. Um, what are kind of the, the key questions that grads have that they need answered? And, you know, some of the stuff that recruitment get asked a lot, um, some of the stuff we, they could save time on with responding to, like, you know, like what's the salary of a, uh, an analyst at Atlantic Technology? You know, it's, it's a static figure, right? So um, I think it's really how can you kill two birds with one stone? How can you make something technical and it's impressive and it's fun to use, but, but also serves a purpose? I wasn't really involved in a lot of the technical aspects. I was more just working on the friendly face of the bot. But when I joined, I just did a sort of brainstorming session with the team to see what they'd be interested in, uh, what we wanted it to look like. I was doing kind of an AWS search at the time as well, so a cloud certification. And so I kind of had all the um, the tech, like the, the technical knowledge of it, but I'd never actually implemented any of it. So it was kind of a good way to get my hands dirty that way. It's one of the great opportunities to really learn about like highest level of industry standards of code. I mean, I think it definitely felt good to be able to, when we all came together, that we could all kind of develop different skill sets. The fact that we were able to just like build it using each other's specialities, like really shortened the length of time it took us to actually build the bot. You know, just people sharing the, the bot through LinkedIn, we got, I think like 2000 responses. And out of those 2000 responses, we had a calculate like 90% success rate, um, which was nuts. I mean, it, it it's something where we're still proud of. So after the success we had in the first year, we managed to get the UK team on board to launch one in another geography for us. Uh, this lets us kind of stress our platform a bit. Uh, we have it set up to handle uh, an increased load, but we've never had to have that increased load. So 
it'll be a good practice for us to make sure our text perfectly up to scratch, very functional, does exactly what we want it to do, which we're almost certain it will. I'm really, really proud of the team and everything that they've done. I think they've been working really, really, really hard on this. So it is, it is lovely that Accenture is seeing it as valuable and applying it to other places. It's probably been one of my favourite things I've done since joining Accenture. It's kind of like a, a it speaks volumes about, um, you know, how if you're interested in something, you take it to the right people, um, put in a bit of work, put a bit of elbow grease, um, and it really can't take flight.